morning and welcome back to Cars and Plaza Motors as we continue our web series. With me once again is Sean McGarry. Patty, how are y'all? Uh, I wanted to take this moment to say we appreciate all the fans out there in cyberspace. Without you, none of this is possible. If you're interested in contacting us or learning more about these machines, there are links in the description of this video. Uh, there's links to our email address as well as our other Facebook pages and writer blog. This morning we'd like to continue our web series with the 1942 Harley-Davidson WLA that you see here. In the beginning stages of World War II, the American government put out the word to American manufacturers that they, were, that they wanted an American military motorcycle. Harley-Davidson answered that call with two separate models, the XA and the WLA. The XA was a reverse engineered BMW, uh, it had a Boxer style engine, and the other model was the WLA which you see here. The WLA features a 45 cubic inch 500cc V-twin motor. This particular WLA was actually on display in a museum for 50 years. Once we got it, about a year ago, we got it running and riding. The interesting thing is all it needed was oil and gas because of how good shape it was kept in. Luckily for us, it was. As Sean said earlier, this machine has, been, has spent time in a noted military museum on static display for the last 50 years. This machine is in original condition, original paint, original everything, tires, even down to the spark plugs. Uh, one of the interesting features that we found when we purchased the machine was in the helmet that came with it. This helmet is a piece of history, as it's the original military police helmet. And when you pull out the liner on the inside, it actually has a gentleman's name that wrote it. The name is R.G. Stepp. In addition to his name, you could also tell that he was a private by the rank that is written on the very front of the helmet. That's living history, folks. At this time, I'd like to do a little bit of a walking overview on some of the features on this machine. Starting off on the front end, you can see it carries the original military police markings as well as the Fort Lewis, Washington markings. It also has what we like to call the blackout lighting system. And for those who don't know, the blackout lighting system was developed for World War II. Uh, during World War II at night, civilians and military vehicles could not have regular headlights. Therefore, they used the blackout lighting system, which is basically a regular headlight only with a hood over it to only let a sliver of light come out. You can see it carries one on the side as well as one on the front. Uh, moving back, well actually still on the front fender, you can see it also has the ammo box. It carries ammunition from the Thompson submachine gun and the sling here. Original tire, original rim on the front. Moving back, you have uh, the fuel tank on the left side, the oil tank on the right. As, as you can see, there's no oil tank below the seat. Uh, the clock has 340 original miles on it. Those are actual miles, folks. Uh, carries a WLA certification tag, which lets the rider know how much uh, fluids to be putting in, in what temperatures. Has a single down tube frame, which cradles the uh, 500cc V-twin motor. Uh, this motor is a side valve. It's actually a pretty powerful motor for this machine. Top speed on this was about 65 miles an hour. Continuing back, you have the kickstart, and below the kickstart, this is actually a grease point, which Sean will be talking about a little bit later. Uh, it has the original toolbox with key, uh, the original saddlebags. These are not reproduction, folks. These are actually original saddlebags. Like I said, this machine is full of history. Uh, moving back to the very back of the machine, you can see it also carries the blackout lighting system on the rear. The Army has a way of making things easier for its non-commissioned officers. You can see this little red circle around the grease point. Well, that was to indicate to the non-commissioned officers when, where, and when to grease the bike for maintenance. Like most old Harleys, this machine features a three-speed hand-shift transmission. Before I explain the transmission, I'd like to talk about the clutch. Uh, there's a difference between what is called the mousetrap clutch and the rocker clutch. The mousetrap clutch is also known as a suicide ship. The difference between a suicide ship and a rocker clutch is simple. The rocker clutch rocks back and forth with your foot. The suicide ship actually has just one point on it which you push down with your foot. In order to shift the motorcycle, this is the engaged position. I mean disengaged position, I'm sorry. When you go to shift it, it's the same action as pulling it in on the handlebar. You push it back with your foot, you reach down, you shift the machine, then you let it clutch out with your foot. 
It takes some getting used to because it's a lot different than riding other normal motorcycles. This Harley features a 6 volt electric system and it's the original 6 volt wiring harness. The battery has been replaced to get the machine in the running order. Another thing about the electrical system is this ignition switch. After doing some research, we discovered it's a multi-function switch. Uh, we previously mentioned the blackout lighting system. In order to turn on regular lighting for daytime running, what you do is you push in this button and you twist it, you twist it and it actually twists one location further than normal. It's a very decent electric system for a 6 volt and it works very well. This Harley also has a twist grip on the left side for the spark advance. This comes into play when you're starting the motorcycle. It has the throttle on the right, a front brake lever here, and a rear brake lever on the opposite floorboard. It has the original Sprinter front end on it, which actually is pretty comfortable for riding. Um, you do feel some bumps, but it's really not too bad. So to start these old Harleys, it's actually a pretty easy process, just a lot of steps to it. Uh, you begin by turning on your fuel at the fuel tap here two or three screws ought to do it. You want to make sure your rocker clutch is pushed forward into the engaged position. Make sure your transmission is in neutral. Then you have to prime it just like the BSA WM20. You have to prime it with a few primer kicks uh, before you set the choke on the carburetor and you get a few healthy kicks to clean up the cylinder. Next thing you do is you crank your spark advance full advance, give it about quarter throttle, turn on your key, and with any luck you should fire right up.